In example one, we have a 4.80 meter long beam that is supported as shown below. We also have our applied loading as shown below. We want to reduce this system of forces to A, an equivalent force couple system about point A, B, a single equivalent force couple system about point B, and C, a single force acting along the length of our beam. Now in our beam below, we have 150 Newton force applied at point A, we have a 600 Newton force applied 1.6 meters in our X direction away from point A. We have a 100 Newton force applied 2.8 meters along our X axis away from point A. And lastly, we have a 250 Newton force applied at point B, which is 4.8 meters away from point A in the X direction. To begin, we need to determine the resultant of our forces. That is, R is going to be equal to the sum of our forces existing in our Y direction we'd have 150 minus 600 plus 100 minus 250 newtons. Thus, our resultant is minus 600 newtons in the J hat direction. Next, we have to determine our moment about point A. If we recall our convention, a moment acting in our clockwise direction is negative, and a moment acting in our counterclockwise direction is positive. To begin, we see our 150 newton force is acting along point A. That is, its line of action runs through point A and will not contribute to the moment of force about point A. Next, we see we have a 600 Newton force acting 1.6 meters away from point A. This is going to cause a clockwise rotation, and thus this contribution to our moment will be negative. Next, we see we have a 100 Newton force acting 2.8 meters away from point A, contributing to a counterclockwise rotation about point A. Thus, this contribution to our moment will be positive. Lastly, we have a 250 Newton force acting 4.8 meters away from point A, it's going to cause a clockwise rotation. Thus, this contribution to our moment will be negative. Considering significant digits, our summation of moments about point A will be 1,880 Newton meters in our clockwise direction. That is, we will have a negative moment. Thus, we could apply our force and our moment, i.e. our couple, as shown as follows. We'd have a 600 Newton force acting about point A, and we'd have a 1,880 Newton meter moment acting about point A in our clockwise direction. For a force couple at B, R is going to remain unchanged. Now we have to calculate our moment about point B. To do such, we will go back to the original diagram and take our moments about point B such that we'd have 150 Newton force acting 4.8 meters away from point B, and this is going to create a clockwise rotation. Thus, we'll have a negative contribution to our moment. Next, we'd have our 600 Newton force acting 3.2 meters away from point B, and this would act in our counterclockwise direction. Thus, we'd have a positive contribution to our moment. Lastly, we would have a 100 Newton force acting 2 meters away from point B that would cause a clockwise rotation. Thus, this contribution would be negative. Our moment about point B due to these forces is going to be 1,000 Newton meters in our counterclockwise direction. Thus, we could express our system as our 600 Newton force acting about point B and a 1000 Newton meter moment acting about point B in our counterclockwise direction. Lastly, to simulate our moment couple about point A or B by representing it as a single force, we have to solve for our distance from A or B for where we can apply R. That is, in our diagram shown to our left, we are trying to generate a 1,880 Newton meter couple about our body by applying our 600 Newton resultant force some distance x away from point A. That is, we can say the magnitude of our moment about point A is going to be equal to the magnitude of x cross r, where x is the distance away from point A where we apply our 600 Newton resultant. And this has to be equal to minus 1,880 Newton meters. Thus, x is equal to the magnitude of our moment about point A per the magnitude of our resultant which is equal to minus 1,880 Newton meters per minus 600 Newtons. And this is equal to 3.13 meters. Now we would get the same result, i.e. the same location along our X axis if we did our moment about B. And that is, we would have 4.8 minus 3.13 meters away from point B for where we'd apply our 600 Newton force. Now lastly, if we have a parallel force, that is, we have our forces existing in a three-dimensional system where they're all parallel, our resultant would just be the sum of our individual forces. And the individual moment about point O would just be R sub I cross F sub I. 
sum from i is equal to 1 to n. And this would give us r prime cross r. r prime is the distance away from point O of where our resultant would act. For a parallel force system, this is a pretty easy formulation. If we had a three-dimensional system, we'd have to determine the x, y, and z locations of the application of the resultant force about our moment arm r. And to do such, we have to project our moment arm r and our resultant force r onto our x, y, x, z, and y, z planes, such that we can determine the contribution of our principal components of our resultant force to the moment about our z, y, and x axes respectively. Now this is complicated, because recall from lecture 5 the decomposition of r and r. We'd have to look at each individual contribution to determine the sum of our moments about point O, and then we'd have to determine the location of the application of r based upon our modified moment arm. 